Welcome to the Tank Arena series, where we will be comparing various tanks and award them points in different categories that include firepower, fire control system, protection, survivability and mobility, 100 points maximum for each category, which would make it 500 points in total. And based on that we will see which one would be a better tank. Also, we will compose a list and put tanks in place they deserve, and in the end we will take a look at all the tanks we have compared and sort them from the best to the worst. In this episode, we will be comparing South Korean K2 Black Panther and Russian T14 Armata. Let's start with firepower. T14 Armata is armed with 125mm 2A82 1M gun that can fire APFSDS, high explosive fragmentation, and anti tech guided missile projectiles. The Armor Pierce Sync Fin Stabilized Discarding Sabered Projectile T14 can fire is the Vacuum 1. According to all available sources, this projectile is currently the most powerful one in the world, simply because the design of T14 permitted the use of longer penetrators than the ones that are currently available. Vacuum 1 is reported to be up to a meter long. In comparison, older Svinets 1 that is currently in service with all Russian tanks is 740 mm long. Vacuum 1 has been confirmed to have at least 450mm penetration at 60 degrees on 2 km, which would indicate the penetration on the 90 degrees surface to be at least 800mm, and possibly around 900mm according to various sources. No other projectile in the world has even similar penetrating power. T14 is also armed with a new Telnik programmable high explosive fragmentation projectile. This projectile has various modes like detonation upon impact, delayed explosion for dealing with enemies behind cover, and lightly armored vehicles, as well as ability to airburst. There have been reports of new ATGM being developed for T-14, but so far it can use the same ATGMs other Russian tanks use, which gives it the ability to shoot at targets at 5 km range, as well as the ability to engage helicopters. T-14 has two machine guns, one remotely operated and one coaxial. The remote weapon station can house either 762 machine gun or the 12.7, which is evident by the fact that the expert version of T90M, the T90MS, has a PK762 machine gun, which is what has been shown on T14 so far, and the domestic T90M has a cord HMG, like previous Russian tanks. K2 Black Panther is armed with 120mm L55 gun, which can fire APFSDS, multipurpose and top attack projectiles. The APFSDS projectile K2 uses has been reported to be a domestically produced DM63 variant. If the performance is comparable to the German DM63, then the penetrating power would be around 370mm at 60 degrees on 2km, which would suggest around 700mm on 90 degree surface. This projectile isn't as good as Vacuum 1 used by T14, it's more comparable to the already mentioned Svinets 1, but K2 has KSTAM smart top attack munition. This projectile is launched in the air and dropped down onto the target to engage it from the top, which is where the tank's armor is the weakest. On top of that, that projectile can engage targets from up to 8 km range. The multi-purpose projectile is basically the American M830A1 MPAT, which has the ability to airburst and can be used as a heat projectile. One major drawback of K2 is the lack of proper high explosive fragmentation projectile. This is even a bigger issue considering the fact that K2 doesn't have a remotely operated machine gun. The one on the roof can only be used manually by the commander if he is exposed. So the anti-infantry capability of K2 is poor compared to most of modern tanks. It lacks high explosive projectile and a remote weapon station, but the anti-tech capability is very good on the other hand. But the problem is that the penetration of the top attack projectile hasn't been disclosed, so it is unknown if it can actually even defeat explosive reactive armor. If it can't, many tanks would pose a massive issue for it, which would degrade its value, but against tanks with no EREA it is perfect. 
Another downside is that the projectile is vulnerable for a short duration while it is searching for a target. It deploys a parachute, which could make it vulnerable against small arms fire, especially if the tank has a remotely operated machine gun that can engage targets at very high elevation. It is also worth mentioning that both tanks are equipped with automatic loaders. So, T-14 gets 100 points for firepower, because its anti-tank and anti-infantry abilities are unmatched by any other tank on the modern battlefield. K2, on the other hand, has to get its anti-infantry abilities upped if it wants to compete with modern tanks in firepower. For that, it gets 85 points in firepower. Now, there isn't much to say about the fire control system of both tanks, other than the fact that they are pretty much on par with one another. Both tanks use third-generation thermal imaging system for both gunner and commander, on top of having automatic target tracking ability. Both tanks are equipped with radars for a bunch of different purposes, which makes their fire control systems one of the best in the world. So, both tanks receive 100 points for fire control system. Now, up to the protection. T-14 has all of the crew moved to the crew compartment in the forward hull, which gives it ability to reduce the protection and size of the turret. Now, before we say anything else, the turret of T-14 doesn't have an excellent protection, probably enough to protect against autocannon fire. But that is an excellent idea. Before you call me crazy, I urge you to watch the video where I explain why it's the great idea to do what has been done on T-14. If you don't want to watch it, I will just say that the area around the gun on most modern tanks is practically the size of T-14's turret, and any hit to the gun mantlet or close to it would damage the gun either way. And since T-14's gun is the only thing that can be neutralized with the hit to the small turret, there is no reason to put a lot of armor, since the gun would be damaged either way. And all the research done on unmanned turret hit probabilities suggests that the chances of it being hit in the first place are extremely low. If you want to know more, please watch the video, I'll put it in the cards. It should pop out now in the top right corner. With that out of the way, the hull of T-14 has excellent protection. The crew capsule is said to have at least 900mm on the front. On top of that, T-14 has new explosive reactive armor, nicknamed Malahit, that can reduce penetration of any modern projectile. The prototype of T-14 was required to have 1000mm against APFSDS and 1500mm against HEAT during its development. So, it is safe to say that T-14 has at least that much. Therefore, it's impossible to penetrate it with any modern projectile. The roof of the crew compartment has at least 300mm protection against heat, since those were also the requirements, but on top of that a lot of parts of the roof are covered in EREA, which further decreased the penetration of heat projectiles. T-14 has Afghanit APS, which can neutralize all incoming heat projectiles, including ATGMs and the ones fired from the tanks. It has been said that it can also neutralize APFSDS projectiles. Well, it can most probably degrade their penetration. Ukrainians have released footage of their Zasson active protection system degrading APFSDS penetration, and since both Zasson and Afghanit are child projects of once Soviet era APS, it is very possible that it is true. Afghanit most probably can degrade the penetration of APFSDS projectiles. The sides of the tank are equipped with 4S24 EREA blocks that are excellent against heat projectiles, especially tandem-shaped ones. The tank is also protected with laser warning receivers, which can warn the crew when the tank is being lased. On top of that, the tank has aerosol discharges that can produce smoke cover, which also disturbs the thermal signature of the vehicle. K2 also has a very good protection. The armor is said to at least be able to stop the L55 APFSDS, which would suggest that it has at least 800mm against APFSDS projectiles, but heat protection hasn't been disclosed. Keep in mind that the 800mm figure is the least we can conclude from such report. It can possibly have even more. The sides of the turret and the hull are protected with EREA blocks, as well as the roof of the turret. But performance of such EREA is unknown, the tank is also protected with laser warning receivers and aerosol dischargers. The tank, in its current state, in the active service, doesn't have hard kill active protection system equipped, but it is said that it should start receiving it pretty soon. 
the tanks equipped with it have been displayed, so I will take the active protection system into consideration. The active protection system of T-14 has 10 charges, 5 at each side. The active protection system of K-2 appears to have only 2 per side, but that is enough for an engagement. For protection the T-14 gets 100 points, simply because its hull is completely impenetrable by any modern projectile, on top of having an excellent active protection system. And if you still have doubts about the turret, go watch the video I told you, you won't be disappointed. K2 gets 90 points for protection, simply because it is unknown if it can possibly survive the hit from T14's vacuum 1 projectile and because the explosive reactive armor doesn't cover the entire hull, where on T14 the entire hull is covered in explosive reactive armor and also has slat or cage armor at the back, another feature the K2 lacks. As for the survivability, T-14, as already mentioned, has the crew separated from the rest of the tank in the crew capsule. The capsule can protect the crew from any inconvenience that happens to the ammo in the carousel. But if the ammo is hit, there are very high chances of ammo cooking off. In that case, the fire would search for the exit and that exit would most probably be through the main gun, which would render the tank useless in combat. Now, I can't say the tank would be able to retreat since I don't know how well the mobility parts are protected from the cook-off, but it is certain that the crew would survive. The extra ammo is placed in the rack outside of the tank, which is also protected with blowout panels. K2 Black Panther has the autoloader ammo placed at the back of the turret protected with blowout panels and armored wall that separates the ammo from the crew compartment. In case it is hit, the fire will not enter the crew compartment because of the blowout panels. But there is an additional ammo rack in the forward hull compartment, which does not have any protection and in case it is hit, the entire tank is busted. For survivability, T14 gets 90 points and K2 gets 75 points. T14 got 90 points because no matter what happens the crew lives, but in many cases the tank or some parts of it will be damaged and thus not allow full combat capabilities. K2 didn't get as many points because of the ammunition in the hull. And the last but not the least, mobility. T14 is powered by a new X layout, 1350 horsepower, 12 churn or 12N360 diesel engine. The engine is said to be able to be switched between different modes to enable it to have more horsepower but since the information is only available when set to 1350 horsepower, I will be talking about that. The engine is an X-layout engine with 12 cylinders, compared to older Soviet and Russian diesel engines which had a V-layout. The engine has maximum of 2100 RPM, which would mean it can produce torque of 4747 Nm, which is better than any engine Russian tanks had. The tank weighs 55 tons and has a maximum speed of 75 to 80 km per hour, both forward and in reverse. I think I should also point out how the tank does not actually weigh 48 tons, as it was previously believed. That was just an empty armata platform. Fully armed T-14 tank actually weighs 55 tons. K2 is powered by MTU MB883 K500 1475 horsepower diesel engine, which can produce 2700 RPM and maximum torque of 4545 Nm. The engines are similar in their capabilities, but as I said, T14's engine can be changed to more powerful modes like the 1500 horsepower, which would make it even more powerful. K2 also weighs 55 tons and has a maximum speed of 70 km per hour. I couldn't find any information if the tank can go just as fast in reverse, but since no such information has been disclosed, it is safe to assume that it cannot. It is also worth mentioning that both tanks have automatic transmission and neutral steering, which means they can pivot around their axis. In mobility, T14 gets 100 points. It has one of the most powerful engines and being able to go just as fast in reverse is a big advantage. K2 comes close with 90 points. Let's take a look at the final score. In firepower, T14 scored 100 points while K2 scored 85 points. For their fire control system, both tanks got 100 points. 
For protection, T14 received 100 points while K2 received 90 points. In survivability, T14 scored 90 points while K2 scored 75 points. And for mobility, T14 received 100 points and K2 received 90 points. So, in total, T14 received 490 points and K2 received 440 points. There is no doubt that T14 is a better tank. K2 has a lot of good things added to it, but it still is not enough to be completely on par with T14. Keep in mind that I am only comparing the tanks individually one on one. There are definitely more K2 Black Panthers out there than there are T14s. Now that we covered enough tanks, we can start slowly ranking them. After the episode 3, this is how the rank list looks like. On the first place, we have T14 Armata, K2 on the second, T90M on the third, Leopard 2A7 comes on the fourth place, followed by Type 96 on the fifth, and last on the seventh place is T72B3. Keep in mind that this is all subject to change the more tanks we compare. And trust me, there are many more to cover. That would be all for this video. If you like my content, you can always support me on Patreon. Anything helps, truly. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, you can correct me in the comments, or you might want to contact me on Discord. In that case, link to my Discord server is in the description. As is the link to my Patreon. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.